We're here in Newbridge House this morning on a beautiful summer's day. The occasion is the Flavours of Fingal show, organised by Fingal County Council and Fingal Tourism. There's a huge variety of exhi exhibits here, from horticulture, agriculture, equestrian events, there's a children's playground, some fabulous tractors on display down there, but rumour has it there's a great food display, and Tony and I are off in there now to get something to eat. Talk to you in a few minutes. Bridge, you're with Fieldstown Farm and you do lamb. Can you tell me a little bit more about the farm? Where are you based, for instance? We're based between Swords and Ashburn. Um, the farm has been in the family for generations and my husband, Porrick, he's the farmer. He produces lamb and we also produce turkey. And do you sell to the public or through butchers? or How, how can we buy your lamb? You can go online to our website, www.irishfood.ie and you can order your lamb there. You can buy a whole box of lamb or a half box of lamb for your freezer. You can also ring us and um, order your lamb. And how are you finding the show today? It's fantastic. It's just such a great location for a show and the weather is just super. So hopefully all the customers will enjoy the day and all the viewers and all the um, exhibitors will have a good two days. Great. Thanks very much, Paige. We look forward to trying your lamb. Okay, thank, thank you. you now we couldn't resist calling in when we saw these lovely cupcakes and here to tell me more about them is Lisa Monaco. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're a local company based in Swords and we bake fresh every day uh, using the best ingredients and this is just a sample of some of our menu. You have a great selection here, they must be very popular. Okay, so this is our Café au lait here Gorgeous. and our Raspberry Ripple here, it's one of our favourite summer time flavours. Our lemon zest, another one of our favourite summer ones, and our fresh coconut. I'm going to have to stop this interview. I'm starting to drool here. So thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, guilty pleasure, if ever there was one. I'm here at the stand operated by the Kilcray Equestrian Centre based in Donabate. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the operation that? Yeah, basically uh, about a year ago, converted an old uh, dairy milking farm to a equestrian centre. And we're just down one road past here at uh, Newbridge Park on the Kilgray Road. So, but we offer um, see uh, lessons, livery, horse breaking, and training. Uh, basically, a full service question center. Have you had many people coming up to the stand? We've had a good few. Uh, I think all the kids around, everyone hears pony lessons, and they want to join in. No. But we've had a good, couple of bookings as well, so it's good. Yeah, we offer uh, we offer beach treks as well, so that's kind of unique around the area. There's not many equestrian centres that are right beside the beach like we are, so a lot of interest in that as well. That sounds so good. Do you have any of your horses here today? Oh, we don't. Uh, basically... They're all down working in the lessons today. Yeah. Saturday is their big day, so... No. We've lessons available. every day except for Monday and Wednesday, so... Tell us a little bit about your photography business. Well, it started out as a hobby and then we quickly developed a big kind of suite of photographs that we weren't doing anything with and lots of people were saying, oh, you really should sell these. So we thought we'd give it a go and um, had some cards printed and I print the big um, photos myself. Um, but this time for this festival, I had the cards printed professionally and I'm really hoping that people enjoy them. You have some stunning photographs here. I'm particularly taken with that butterfly there and this this lovely scene here. Where was that taken, do you know? I took that from the steps of the Donabate Post Office facing Smith's Pub. So it's right now it's a disused building, but I think it's absolutely beautiful and I hope somebody will do something with it soon. It absolutely is stunning. Well, the best of luck to you, Dorothy. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm with PJ Howell, Director of Services with Fingal County Council. PJ, congratulations on a, a wonderful event here today. You've even organised the weather. Thank you very much, Lorcan. Well, you know, we were a bit um, nervous about the weather in the, in the run-up to this, and we knew that if we had uh, good weather, it would be good. We're really delighted with all of the exhibitors. The displays are fantastic. And um, the people are coming out in great numbers. Yep. Is this the first flavour of Fingal event? Yes, it is. Um, I think over the last couple of years, we have been uh, doing a lot of work with the horticulture and agriculture you know, community in Fingal, and this is an opportunity to put the whole lot on show here together for our first flavours of Fingal. Hopefully it won't be the last, but we'll review it after today. It's really colourful, and the crowds are thronging in now. It looks like it's going to be a great success, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much again, Lorcan, and hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Well, I've 
decided to rest my weary bones here and sit on one of the lovely chairs that Jones Garden Centre are providing and I'm talking to Carl here from the Garden Centre. So Carl, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Garden Centre, how long you've been in business for instance? Well we, my grandfather originally bought the land that we're on there at the top of the Harris Road there in uh, 1955 and my father's been farming it ever since and um, we started doing pick your own fruit in 76, 1976 and um, we fell into a garden centre as people asking us for plants and that type of stuff around 1990. And we've grown to what we have today. We've built a new multi-million euro climate control building up there um, back in 2010. We opened in February 2011 and we've been moving well. We just got planning for a restaurant, so we'll be hoping to open that before Christmas. Excellent. I've, I've been in your garden centre and it's very impressive. And you have a great stand here today at the show. What does a show like this mean to a company like yeah, yourselves? We, we have to be here today. It's a great opportunity for us to be here to broaden our, our, our landscape, to let more people from Fingal and the greater Dublin area and all over the country hopefully coming here today that we're, that we're in business and where we are we're only up the road from Fingal like you know and that's why we're here you know. So I've been drawn to the Keeling stand by the smell of freshly cut strawberry and I'm just going to sample some here. That looks lovely. Are, they, are these strawberries locally grown? Yes, they are yeah they're grown in St Margaret's just behind the airport um, as well as the strawberries being grown we have the blueberries and the Irish blackberries and the raspberries and not, they're all grown in St. Margaret's. You're not sampling them though. Oh no we are, would you like to try some? I will in a minute, yeah, that's lovely. Course. Yeah, yeah, but we're just doing strawberries at the moment. So, so what else do Keelings do? Um, this is the whole display of the produce we do, so we do um, Bramley Irish apples, we also do eating apples which will be ready in September. We do all the three colours of peppers, the red, the yellow and the green. Um, we also grow lettuce, um, the romaine head and uh, the Chinese leaf we have here today that's grown in Castle Bellingham in County Louth. And we also have aubergines, which is the first year this year that Keelings have grown Irish aubergines. That's terrific. Yeah, it's great. Uh, are you getting many people coming up to the stand? It we certainly are. looks like it is. I have to fight my way through. I know, we are. And the weather, I think, is fantastic for eating strawberries, so everybody's enjoying them today. Yeah. It's a great show. It Best is. of luck. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank Bye you. Now. This is lovely. Mm. Mm, gorgeous. We're now at the Country Crest stand and it's quite an impressive stand and I've just sampled some of your shepherd's pie. I, I, I didn't know that Country Crest made shepherd's pie. Yeah, um, well Country Crest do an awful large range of products. Um, they actually started out producing potatoes from the farm direct um, to the main retailers in Ireland and it has been a massive success. They now, pro they now um, have employ 170 people um, and produce an awful lot of ready meals as well so they've taken the the homegrown product to another level and everybody knows your, your landmark of, of the wind turbine how's that working out for you well the wind turbine is a great success sustainability is is a big word and it's something that we can put on our packs and promote our packs sustainability is a big thing into the future and it's something country crest are very much committed to there's an absolutely magnificent smell of, of, of shepherd's pie here and I'm just eyeing it over your shoulder there and you've got loads of people at your stand. How's the show going for you? The show is a great success. We really find that um, people are very much engaging with us. They really feel um, promoting Irish is actually great. All your produce is Irish, is that correct? All our product is Irish. We source an awful lot of um, raw materials locally from Irish producers, Irish meat, Irish veg, um, even some Irish uh, chicken as well for ready meals. They're all actually produced in-house. We cook them. It's like a big MPD kitchen, new products. It's very um, innovative. We're producing an awful lot for the, for, the, for the supermarkets as well, where we'd actually have, it's fresh, 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 and um, our chefs are really engaged, and it's really Really just a big kitchen producing. We produce 100,000 ready meals a week. That's fantastic. Grown locally, produced locally, distributed locally. Absolutely. That's terrific. That's a great Irish success story, a great Fingal success story. Absolutely. It's a massive success and it's a credit to everybody involved in Country Crest. Well, we wish you all the best. Thanks Thank for your you time. Much. We've stopped off at the wool shop, which is something unusual here, and I'm ta talking to Tony and Philippa. Philippa, do you want to tell me a little bit about what's going on here? Um, well, there's two aspects to this uh, side of it. There's the wool shop and the Donabate uh, Needle Crafters, which is um, a non-profit making organisation uh, devoted to retaining the old skills in knitting, crochet, weaving, uh, quilting and that sort of thing. And we're trying to promote this uh, to the younger element in the town and to uh, retain these skills. And to that end, we're giving classes and we're going forward for uh, the leader program grant uh, to try to give us funds to, to, to be able to do this. And we're doing that out of the uh, Donabate uh, Portran Community Centre. 
Uh, and Tony, how do you fit into the equation? Uh, we fit into the equation in that we have a wool shop in the Dunnett Bay Leisure um, Centre there in the Portran Road. And it's probably the only wool shop in the Dunnett Bay, well, in North County at the moment. And we supply wool. Uh, Sirdar, Loopy, Rico, uh, you name it, and need knits and needles, and, and also people sell some of the local craft wear as well in the shop. Um, we we'll hope to be running a market as well on the Saturday coming uh, last two weeks in August, uh, where needle crafters will sell their wares and that. And that's, that's in a nutshell where we fit in. So a, an exhibition or a show like this must be absolutely perfect for you. Oh, it's great exposure, yeah, to tell people just to get the message out that, you know, we have a wool shop here because there's a lot of knitters out there who have to travel long distances to buy wool and, and accessories and just to tell them that we're local and they can buy the stuff there from us. Is knitting and needlecraft is something that went into decline during the Celtic Tigers? Is it coming back? It's coming back with a vengeance, yes. I mean, some of the uh, people are particularly these wool, uh, yarn scarves here. The wool is roughly about seven euros to ten euros, and the, when they're knit, they take about an hour to knit, and they're selling them from fifty to seventy euros. So there's a little industry there. People are selling on the internet, and that. Great stuff. Well, enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks very much for your time. What have we got here? Chocolate. And my chocolates here. Where do you make it? Uh, we make them in Leash, in the Erol, small village. May I, may I taste? Yes, you can. It's cinnamon and bergamot. Uh, it's fudgy chocolate. Mm, that's lovely. Thank you. How's the show going to you? It's very good. Okay, Tina, you're here with Kyo's. And tell me, what do Kyo's do? We are a farming family. We've been farming the fields in North County, Dublin for almost 200 years now. Uh, potatoes is our principal trait, uh, farming the fields. And we also now have developed our own range of cooked, grown and cooked on the farm, hand cooked artisan crisps. I've just sampled them and they are absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to back to sample some more in a minute. And I see you do packs of ready, ready to cook potatoes. We do. We have a lovely, easy cook range that we developed, a convenience potato range for the times that we now live in. Um, they're lovely, microwavable. We have a small baby pack. You can cook straight into the microwave, seven minutes, and a family pack, 13 minutes. And we've got some lovely fresh Fingal queens that we're selling on offer today uh, from the local fields of Fingal. Um, yeah. Just getting it all, getting it all going, and getting uh, the people of Fingal behind our brand and, and eating the spuds. You're, you're based near Old Town, is that right? We are, yeah. We're out the Old Town Road, and um, that's where we've been. The family has been set for years now, and that's where we farm the fields. So it's a great example of a traditional product that has moved with the times, and you've a, a modernised version of the traditional potato. Well, this is it. You have to innovate in order to get. Uh, the, you know, the people of the locality behind you. People's needs have changed, uh, people are moving more to convenience, you're working longer hours, you don't have enough time to say prepare a full meal, bake your spuds and boil them, so you need to have these convenience methods and um, you know, just provide for the consumer. I can see it's getting very busy at your stand, we better let you get back. Yeah, Thanks very much Dina. Thanks a million Thank you, million, Thank you. bye bye. Sheila, what's this sample you've just presented me as? It looks lovely. Um, Lorcan, this is our signature starter below in the new Samphire restaurant in the Waterside Hotel. It's the only hotel just down on Balcarric Beach. So it's a sample of smoked fish, coli, cod in a white cream and dill sauce. It smells lovely. <laughs> if I wasn't holding a microphone, I'd be tucking straight into it. Yeah, it's, very, it's very good with the brown bread. Yeah, yeah you need to have both. I'll hold the microphone. Oh, very much. <laughs> I guess. Oh. That is so good. Mm. Tony, you've got to try this. It's lovely. And how's business for you in the hotel? It's good, yeah. It would be better if we had a good summer. But it is. It's flying. So yeah. there's a wedding on at the moment, so that's where Tom's gone. You have a fabulous location overlooking the beach, it's right beside the Martello Tower. Yeah, it's special. It's lovely. It's a one-off. I've often called in there. I go for a walk along the coast and drop in there for a cup of coffee at the end of the walk. It's very yeah. restful and relaxing. It is. It's especially nice at the start of the day. Around about 8 o'clock to about 11 o'clock in the morning. It's very, it's lovely then because you don't have the big crowds. Okay, well, we'll let you get back to it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Juice. Now, pomegranates wouldn't be in season at the moment. They're in season from around no, um, November through to February in an angle. Now, 
So when that water comes up to the boil, we'll pop the beans in. I think we'll just have enough there. Reduce the um, sting from the onion. You could actually put a little bit of lemon juice on them or a bit of vinegar. It sounds funny, but actually it does um, soften them out a little bit. So the red onion always is um, sweeter than your white onion. And then the shallot, which is a small, small <coughs> little onion, that's very refined flavor. It's far more sophisticated than a, a general onion, so that's why people use shallots for salads. So just make sure all our skin is off. So last night we had a barbecue with beer class in the kitchen of the castle. And uh, we were tasting lovely Irish uh, craft beers. <laughs> in to have a chat with Paddy Byrne from Scurries. Paddy, you describe yourself as an organic farmer. What does that actually mean? Well, organic farming uh, in my neck of the woods is growing without any chemicals or, well, artificials really. It's natural. We have hens and chickens on the, on the yard and we use that manure to grow our vegetables and our fruit with. Basically, that's what we do. So it's good, wholesome, traditionally yeah. developed food. What, what range of produce do you have? I see, I see a lot of stuff here from juice to yeah. strawberries and jams. Well, uh, our hen eggs and duck eggs are very popular. Then we have the fruit. We have all the fruits. Uh, strawberries, raspberries, gooseberries, black currants, red currants, white currants, loganberries, blackberries, apples, plums, you name it. We have the fruits all grown. So with the fruits, we make the jams at home in the kitchen. And uh, then we have the vegetables. We grow a large range of vegetables. We possibly have uh, maybe up to 35 different vegetables grown uh, on the farm. Now that would include maybe three or four different types of beans right. and peas and things like that and spinaches and oh, you name it, we grow it, you know. And where can we buy your, your produce? Uh, we only sell direct to the public. We sell from the farm gate, which we recently opened a farm shop. So hopefully uh, it'll improve our sales there, you know. You better tell us where that is. Yeah, well that's just about 100 metres from our Gillen Park gates, just up outside Scarries. Great. Great. Well, we look forward to visiting you. Yeah, thanks very much. Ha thanks for your time. Thank you. All the Thank best you. now. Bye-bye. Flavours of Fingal is not all about food. This is the ecology area where there's a wide ranging display of interesting exhibits. Everything ranging from an orphan baby hedgehog to eagles to owls, animal habitats, and goodness knows what else. Over the last uh, two years, since last year, we released 
uh, 39 kites in Fingal, red kites which were brought over from Wales in partnership with National Parks and Wildlife Service. Uh, the Fingal County Council here at Newbridge hosted the release cages um, and we actually had, um, so we've had 39 birds released last year. We've got about 20, 25 still locally um, in Fingal itself, um, mostly in the sort of Lusk area, um, primarily is where the birds are located and we've got Hopefully in 2013 we'll have breeding red kites in County Dublin. They're obviously breeding in Wicklow at the minute, um, but we've, well, hopefully next year we'll have breeding kites in, in, in Dublin or in Fingal, which would be great. When we were filming in Ansbrook for a, another programme, we saw the kites. We didn't actually manage to get them on camera, but we did see them, a pair of them. Right, OK. They, I mean, they've, they've actually travelled quite widely from Fingal. We've had birds out in Mayo, would you believe, that have come back in again. We've had two kites that have gone up to um, County Down, two kites that have gone down to Wicklow, uh, and some of them have come back in again. So they really are. They're travelling far and wide, but they will sort of breed within five to ten kilometres of the release location, which was obviously here at, at Newbridge. Um, so they'll be hopefully breeding kites next year. They're still too young to breed in their first year. So we had three three pairs sort of settling that looked like they might breed but they're still too young to breed in, in Fingal this year. This fella looks like he wants to go home, um, what, what's the plan, what will happen to him? This is obviously, this is just a captive bird that's, that's here today, so this is a, a captive um, bird that'll never, this is not a release bird, this is a bird that'll be kept in captivity and trained up for falconry for education and uh, uh, by the, the falconer that's here today, so this is not a, this is not a release bird. The, the birds that are involved in the release projects are all taken out of the wild uh, and then released again into the wild, whereas falconry birds are, are, are generally bred in, in captivity and, and kept in captivity for, throughout. Falconer is taking every precaution to make sure the bird doesn't disappear on him. Uh, what, what, what kind of bird have we got here? It's a golden eagle. A golden eagle. Yeah. It's a captive bred golden eagle. I right. brought him from France. And he's got a lot to say for himself anyway. Well, she's imprinting on me. She. She is imprinting. Yeah. So she, she'll regard you as her parent? For now, yes. Right. Because in, in the water, the eagles. That may have looked like a dummy rabbit or so. <laughs> uh, in the wild, they can stay with the parents up to three years. Right. So she's calling from here on the Sonarta stand. So, see, tell me a little bit about what Sonarta do, for instance. Well, Sonarta are, are an organic um, garden centre. Well, she's an organic garden and a centre up in Laytown. We we grow a lot of our own produce. We grow all our own produce, and we that supplies the cafe. We also sell it at the food co-op in Dublin. Um, we also we also um, grow plants, and we sell them to. But also, we're really about creating a, um, a connection between people and nature. So we've got a beautiful nature trail that pe people can go on, and um, a lovely and a food garden as well that to show people really where food comes from, where vegetables. And Sounds like a good place to bring the children. Oh, it's a wonderful place to bring children, especially the, the nature trail is really really special. We've got a bird hide down by the estuary, and, and there's an H, there's a walk by the by the river. Oh, it really is a wonderful place for children, and the cafe is under new management as well, and, and so it's a lovely place just to sit and have a cup of coffee. I see you have a notice here that you're looking for help, you're looking for people to come and help with. What, what have you got lined up for them? <laughs> well, at the moment there's quite a bit of weeding to do, but it depends on what time, what time of the year people come along, because sometimes it'll be seed sowing or... Um, Oh, harvesting. On a Friday we do a lot of harvesting and, you know, at the moment the soft fruits are ripe and, yeah, so if people come along on a Friday we could put them to work harvesting fruits. Um, yeah, no, it's, I really highly, highly recommend it. It's good for the soul. Uh, we've bumped into a familiar face here. Trevor Sargent, you're, you're here on the Sonata stand and I see you have a copy of your book in hand. 
Yes indeed Lorcan, this is a fantastic day and it's an opportunity to talk to people about growing and about food. Obviously working as chair in Sonarta um, is the reason why I'm at that stand. Uh, but the book is a fundraiser also for Sonarta and the other organic centres around the country. Even though it's based in Fingal and it's very much the Balbriggan garden that you see here. These are some of my line drawings which... That's your own garden? That's my own small back garden and small front garden and there's uh, 62 line drawings like that in the book along with photographs of Mary McAleese and Doreen Allen and other people who are writing in the book. There are 25 guest writers. So it's nearly sold out actually would you believe. That's uh, terrific. And we're going for a second uh, edition so I'm just working on index and a few little tweaks but more or less as it is. So if you've bought it already it won't be forcing you to buy the new edition to get the new oh, information. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the old book will do fine for every week of the year in the garden. You're not going to do what the school book publishers do and make everybody buy the new edition just because they change one page. No? Uh, no, although people might be suggesting that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be greedy about it. No, no. I really just want people to get gardening and if they read the book, that's a bonus, but really it should be an incentive. So I have little cards as well as sort of bookmarks and uh, there's a website, uh, Trevor's Kitchen Garden .ie, and week by week that's updated. So even if you have the book, you can still use the website and uh, get updates on the book. This is the Fingal Beekeepers stand and we can see there a working hive or an extract from it. Now they're actually too busy to talk to us but it's fascinating to see the bees in action. Hi there, how are you getting on? Good. Enjoying the show? Mm. What's your name? Shane Barker. Shane, I, see, I saw you doing some wheelies in that chair. You, did you ever fall over? Mm -mm. Never? You're going to fall over sometime. What? No. Is that a medal you have there? No, it's a lucky charm. A lucky charm. Well that's it from the Flavours of Fingal show. We didn't get to see all of it, it was so full, there were so many exhibits and we spent so much time talking to some very interesting people. But it's been a great day, it's been a great show, well done to Fingal County Council, well done to Fingal Tourism. For Fingal Community TV, I'm Lorcan O'Toole.